In this video, I will introduce Comsol Multiphysics version 5.5 by solving a simple mass transfer problem. Rather than simply typing in numbers uh, where they are needed, I will use so-called parameters in Comsol Multiphysics. Although using parameters is not required, it makes it a lot easier to make changes in your model. But before we dive in, what is it that Comsol actually does? Comsol solves differential equations numerically in one, two, or three dimensions. To get a feeling for how that works, let's look at a simple problem in one dimension. Let us assume that you know that the second order derivative of y with respect to x is given by a function f, and that you want to calculate the y values between x1 and x2, but that this function f is either difficult or impossible to integrate analytically. What you can do then is to discretize the function, that is to divide the distance between x1 and x2 into several small steps. To keep it simple, let us use a constant step size h. We don't know what the y of x function looks like, but for each x value we can approximate the second order derivative of y with respect to x in terms of the unknown y values. For each x value we get one linear equation in unknown y values. In total, we get a large uh, set of linear equations in y, a y equals f, that we can solve to get all of our y values. It is, of course, possible to do this by hand, but even for rather simple cases, that would be rather tedious as the system of equations gr quickly grows very, very large. In our simple example, we can get a matrix equation that looks something like this where you have zeros everywhere in this big matrix except near the diagonal. I won't show that here, but you also need to figure out a way to handle boundary conditions. In our example, a boundary condition might be that the function value y is known for the first x value. Once all that have been dealt with, you also need to choose a good strategy for solving the matrix equation. Uh, things get even more difficult to do by hand uh, for two-dimensional or three-dimensional problems and indeed if you have a time-dependent problem. When using Comsol, you step-by-step -step tell Comsol what your problem is in these seven steps. First, you select the dimensions of your problem, for example a two-dimensional problem. Second, you add one or more physics to your model that is, the sets of the differential equations describing the system. Third step is to tell Comsol if you have a stationary problem or a time-dependent problem. Fourth step is to draw your geometry. The fifth step is uh, to enter the specific data and boundary conditions for your problem. The sixth step is to choose how detailed you want the discre uh, discretization discretization to be and finally in the seventh step you let Comsol do all the tedious calculations and bookkeeping for you. So after this introduction it's now time to dive into Comsol. The, exam the, the example we are going to use is a simple mass transfer problem in two dimensions. We have a ventilation duct that has a straight 0.8 meter long channel with an opening to the left that is 0.4 meter high. To the right we have a bend with an inner radius of 0.4 meters and an outer radius of 0.8 meters. The ventilation duct stretches 0.4 meters into the plane, but we will simplify and treat uh, this as if it was a two-dimensional problem and only model this slice uh, through uh, or along the ventilation duct. The air inside the ventilation duct is standing still and in the inlet uh, to the left we have an ethanol concentration of one mole per cubic meter and at the outlet to the lower right we have no ethanol in the air. The task also states that the diffusivity of ethanol in air is 1.35 10 to the power minus 5 square meter per second. Time to start up Comsol and click the model wizard. Step one, we choose the two dimension option and are greeted with step two, a list of available physics descriptions. What you have in your list will depend on what physics you selected when installing a console on your computer. And the exact names of them might vary between console versions. 
the physics we need is found under chemical species transport and is called transport of diluted species. Click on that to select it and then click add and then click on the green right arrow. Step three. The problem we want to model is stationary, so we click stationary and then on the tick box next to done. In the window that appears, we have a few different tabs. In the model builder tab, four main items are listed. Global definitions, where you can enter parameters, component one, study and results. Inside component one, we have definitions, geometry, materials, transport of diluted species, that is our physics, and finally, mesh, which is the discretization. Step four. Let us now start by drawing our geometry. Our geometry consists of two parts, a rectangle and a bend. You can create these geometric shapes either by selecting the item you want uh, from the contextual menu or by sketching using the mouse. Depending on how your computer is set up, you either left click or right click on geometry to open the contextual menu. Let us select rectangle and click build. Note, if you click build selected, you build the item you are currently working on, while if you click build all objects, you build or rebuild all geometric objects you have created so far. In the version of Comsol I have installed on my computer, the default rectangle is 1 meter wide and 1 meter high and has its lower left corner in the point x equals 0, y equals 0. You can change these four numbers to anything you want and click rebuild uh, to see the effect. If you happen to create something by mistake or if you change your mind, uh, you open the contextual menu for the item and select delete. If you want to sketch uh, your geometry, you first make sure that the sketch icon is activated. Click on it to activate or deactivate. To the right of the sketch icon, you have various geometric objects. The ones we are going to use today is the polygon, the quadratic and the rectangle. The small dots you see in the icons of these tools symbolizes the mouse clicks you need to do uh, to use these tools. I will now sketch my geometry without caring too much about the exact dimensions. We will go back and modify geometry later using parameters. First, let's select the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool icon only has one dot, so you click somewhere and drag to get the size you want. Next, uh, next let's create the bend. We choose the draw quadratic tool and click on the lower right corner of the rectangle to create the lower part of the bend and then click in two other places to create a curve. Next, we want to draw a straight line for the outlet, so we choose the Draw Polygon tool. Since we are in the middle of drawing our geometry, the first point of the straight line is already defined and we only need to click once to get a straight line. Next, we choose the quadratic again and click in two different places. And finally, we use the Polygon tool to connect this end uh, with the point where we started. After that, we click the sketch icon uh, to deactivate it and to tell console that we are done. Console answers by filling in the band, telling us that it recognizes that what is inside this band uh, is an area where calculations are to be done. If you, when sketching the four parts that make up the band, uh, happen to deactivate the sketch icon, you will end up with four segments without console understanding what you want to do with them. What you can do then is to access the contextual menu for geometry and create a convert to solid conversion. If you have the four connected segments selected when you create the convert to solid conversion, console will automatically uh, add all four segments to the conversion. Otherwise, you can click to add and click again to take away uh, any segment from the conversion. Click to build to see the effect of your changes. The geometry I've drawn is not exactly the same as the one specified in the task. Uh, so let us now copy all in the information from the task into parameters. 
Apart from the information in the task, I will add the information uh, where I want the left corner of our geometry to be located. I will call this x pos and y pos and set their values to zero. When entering parameters in COMSOL, I would recommend you uh, to always specify the unit. In this case, we have meters as the length unit and we specify unit within straight brackets after the numerical value. COMSOL will warn you if units don't make sense or if COMSOL can't understand what you have written. So if you happen to forget the straight bracket here around the unit, Comso will protest that it doesn't understand uh, what the var variable m is. So let me enter all the parameters found in the task and then I'll get back to you. We can now turn back to our geometry and express all the points in terms of our parameters. The rectangle should have its base corner, that is its lower left corner, in the point, point x pos y pos and we enter our variable length as the width and height as the height. Uh, we continue expressing all other points in terms of our parameters. And as you notice, when I click build, I get error messages. So I messed up and need to rethink what I actually entered. Uh, so I entered some, some wrong combinations of my parameters. So why bother using parameters? Well, by using parameters, you can quickly change your model without the tedious typing in of the same numbers in multiple places. If you, for example, want to change the length of the straight part of the ventilation duct, go to the parameters uh, and change the numerical value for that parameter. When you have done that, a small asterisk appears next to each geometric object that is dependent on that parameter. Simply go to the geometry and click build all objects to update your model. For parameters that affect your physics, for example the diffusivity, you only need to redo the calculation. Step 5. Let us now enter our data for the physics. Inside transport of diluted species we have two filled symbols and one unfilled symbol. The filled symbols indicate that the values entered here are valid for the entire uh, inside of the domain. The unfilled symbols indicate that they affect the boundary only. The first symbol is named transport properties and inside it you specify the diffusivity. You also specify the velocity here but in our case the air is standing still so we just leave that as zero. The next symbol is called no flux and if we click uh, that we see that by default console assumes that there is no flux across any boundary. You may note that uh, we have seven boundaries and that it says not applicable for one of them. That's because that boundary is a false boundary that appeared due to the way we constructed our geometry by drawing one rectangle and one bend next to each other. The boundary conditions given in this example is the concentration in the inlet and the concentration in the outlet. Thus, uh, we open the contextual menu for our physics, select concentration, click the boundary representing the inlet to specify where this boundary value, uh, value is valid, and then enter our uh, parameter or our numerical value for that boundary condition. And we repeat the process for the outlet concentration. The last symbol under our physics, uh, the initial values, 
will not matter in our simulation since we have set this model up as a stationary problem. Step 6. It is now time to choose discretization. We click Mesh and choose Element Size and then click Build All. The finer mesh you choose, the longer time uh, the calculation will take. If you however choose a, a too coarse mesh, it may influence your results. Thus, if you want quick and accurate calculations, do your first calculations with a somewhat coarse mesh and then me make your mesh finer and finer until you see no significant changes in your results. Note that you have an option to ent uh, enter either physics controlled mesh or user controlled mesh. The latter alternative, however, is for advanced users of console. Step 7. Uh, run the simulation. Uh, simply click study and then compute and wait for console to finish the calculation. In the task description you are asked how the total flux varies along the ventilation duct and why that is. So our last task here is to change what result is being plotted in the graph. Open up the 2D plot group concentration by clicking on the triangle next to it. Then click on the surface plot surface. We can now change the expression being plotted. Click the green and red double arrow and in the pop-up tree uh, select component 1, transport of diluted species, species C, fluxes and finally total flux magnitude. Note that the options available in this pop-up menu tree depend on the physics you have chosen. In our case, we have only one physics and only one component. Click plot to update the plot and try to explain to other students why you get this result.